You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, everyone. I'm Ross Palumbo, and here's a look at your top stories at this hour. All eyes are on the sky today while wearing safety glasses, of course, for the rare solar eclipse. Here in Southern California, we got a partial eclipse, but 15 states were in the path of the totality. KCAL's Jared Hills is live in one of those states, New York, for a look at the eclipse excitement. Big sense of community out there as this is happening, right, Jared? Yeah, Ross, I mean, we were so close to totality here in New York City. We had about 90%, but not too far away. The, the sky uh, completely went dark with this thing. While there were only about 30 or so million people to be in that path of totality, there were hundreds of millions who were able to experience this in some capacity. Take a look. A moment of awe as the solar eclipse cast darkness over daytime. The Southwest got the first glimpse. It got dark real quick and lightened up pretty neat. 31 million people live in the path of totality for this once in a generation marvel where the moon blocks out the sun. Crowds at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway enjoyed the greatest spectacle in the sky. Even though we knew what to expect, what to expect, it was just mind blowing. In Russellville, Arkansas, more than 350 couples took the celestial cue and tied the knot sealing it with an eclipse. It just seemed really fun and something unique. NASA estimated about 99% of people in the U.S. could see at least a partial eclipse, making this event the ultimate water cooler experience. Even scientists emphasize the social impact. It's far more about inspiration, awe, and joy for humanity. It's an event that just makes you feel a lot of things. The name of the viewing game today was cloud cover, with New England having the least of it, making for the best line of sight in America. For three or four minutes of peace and awe, it's the last total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. until 2044. All right, so while this was really just kind of a cool event for people to be able to take in, there is some science happening in the background. Uh, you have NASA as well as other scientists who are sending instruments up into the sky to be able to look at things like uh, solar flares, also the corona, which potentially could uh, improve GPS systems and even weather forecasting. Back to you. Jared, I'm so interested to know I used to live just a few feet from where you're standing right now. When this happened, when you got to the 90%. Yeah. Can I see your roof? <laughs> I can almost see it behind you. When, when we got to 90% there in New York, was it, could you notice a uh, quiet descend across the city or what was it oh. like? Yeah, yeah. So there were a couple of things. The first thing that we really noticed was how cool it got all of a sudden. I mean, the temperature uh -huh. dropped. Uh, I don't want to give out a number, but significantly enough where we felt like it was chillier. Also, the fact that all of a sudden it just felt like it was significantly later in the day. The darkness mm -hmm. started to come on. And then one of the rare things you see in New York City is just this moment of, of calm, right? You could see people coming out on rooftops, coming out on the balconies, on the streets, stopping the work that they were doing and just taking a, a couple of minutes to gaze up at something that, again, we won't see uh, on the continental U.S. for decades. Nice That's to take you. a moment, right, to enjoy all of this history happening yeah. right above our heads. Jared Hill, live exactly. in New York. Thank you so much. Right. All right, back here at home, the iconic Griffith Observatory is actually closed today, but that didn't stop all these people from coming to catch the partial eclipse. We spoke to some excited spectators here. You could see people are talking to each other and waving, and so it's it's... Yeah, it's a community thing. It's science. It's uh, this our world that we live in. This is the only place we know of that has life. And for us to see what's happening with the sun and the moon and the eclipse, and it's, it's interesting. It's uh, fascinating. It is fascinating. And stay with CBS News Los Angeles for continuing coverage of the fascinating eclipse today. All right, a live look outside now as we turn to our weather. We had a partial eclipse, but the sun is back out shining and it's about to get a whole lot warmer. KCAL meteorologist Paul Diano has our next weather forecast.
Here are your next weather headlines. A chilly morning. A lot of us dropped down to the upper 30s, lower 40s. That was brisk for this time of year, but temperatures are warming up very rapidly this afternoon. It's going to be a spring like week. Haven't said that in a very long time, uh, and it's going to be dry for a while. The only rain chance is coming up on Saturday. Got to show you this. Uh, this is a shadow of the moon racing across the US at 1500 miles an hour. It moved in in Texas and less than an hour later uh, it was exiting New England. Uh, that was the total solar eclipse here in Southern California. We had 49% coverage of the sun by the moon. It was 100% in a narrow swath of Texas moving north and east up toward Cleveland, Indianapolis, Niagara Falls and Buffalo and eventually the Canadian Maritimes. But that's what it looked like from space. A big shadow of the moon on Earth. Pretty rare. Not going to happen again for another two decades. I hope you had a chance to get outside and see what you saw today. The partial eclipse here in Southern California. Pattern changed. That's a wonderful thing because storm after storm was diving down into Southern California. Cold storm, snow level 3,000 feet, several inches of rainfall in late March and early April. That has shifted just far enough to the east. We're on the other side of it, which is the exact opposite weather. A large ridge of high pressure is going to warm us up and give us sunshine and dry weather for at least the next four or five days. 78 today in our warmest valleys. Beaches up to 73 early this afternoon and the high desert, a breezy to windy 68 degrees. Extended forecast warms us up even more. 78 in L.A. tomorrow, 82 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. Look at those two chillier days. They happen to be most people's weekend. It's only going to be in the 60s this weekend as another cold storm sits off the California coastline. Haven't been able to catch a break on the weekend recently. Valleys will warm up during the week, but cool down this weekend. And the Inland Empire, you're going to cool down as well. After mid-80s on Wednesday and Thursday, you'll only be in the mid-60s on Saturday. That's your KCAL forecast. Have a great day. All that sunshine looks beautiful. L.A. could soon put the brakes on dog breeding permits. Tomorrow, City Council is going to consider a temporary moratorium. Now, officials say it's an attempt to address overpopulation at the six city-run animal shelters. If passed, the moratorium would be lifted when shelters get to below 75% capacity for three months in a row. It could also be reinstated automatically if shelter capacity rises to more than 75% once again. We will keep you updated on that. Look at those cute little poochies there. This has been The Rundown. Thanks for joining us. We will be back live at 3 right here on CBS News Los Angeles.